This is Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans with me, Cheryl Burke, and iHeartRadio podcast. I'm talking to Sharna Burgess from the Down Under. <laughs> We're going to just go straight into it because you, my friend, I have a lot of questions yes, to ask. Yes, I'm sure. Because first of all, I haven't seen you in so long, but we caught up last night. So yes. I don't want people to be like, God, Cheryl, like get straight into it. Why don't you? No, you we know? did. We caught up a little bit last night and we have so much more to catch up on. Yeah. And, but like on a personal level, like yes. I don't want to be like, you know, we're not going to manicure this conversation. <laughs> we're going to just, this is called sex, lies and spray tans for a reason. Love. Um, we both have a lot of history on Dancing with the Stars. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. A lot of history. I would say we both grew up on Dancing with the Stars. I think we both had pretty much every experience you can have on Dancing with the know. Stars. I don't know. I mean, right? really? Yeah. I mean, think about in the grand scheme of things, like from the beginning to the end, all of the stuff that you went through as you were growing up on yeah. that show, from the good, the bad and the ugly, like it, the, because naturally growing up, you mm-hmm. go through those things. Um, all heightened by media attention and on a public platform. Not and normal. Just, yeah, you know, just your average everyday all stuff. Different <laughs> types of feels. Different types of feels. Yeah. And actually, like within that though, what, what makes it so fascinating is that we go through huge chapters of our lives. Huge. Whether that is when I started, I drank a lot and then that became a thing for a decade. Mm-hmm. Now I'm sober, but this was all happening through there was one common denominator and it was dancing with the stars. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a lot of my friendships, right? Like there was that. And I remember you first really, I think talking to you for the first time, you know, you came on as troop. Yep. Was it season 13? Season 12. 12, Yeah. And I remember me and you talking for the first time, like really chatting at David Arquette's house. Yeah. When we were, remember we were going to go to Universal Hollywood Horror Nights, like, and I had, I was so scared. I don't, it's the music that scares me. Yeah. Anyway, me and you had a really great conversation and you were in another relationship Mm -hmm. at that time. I was. Wow. How things have changed. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I guess just tell my listeners like how, first of all, you you were troop. Did you know you were auditioning to be troop? And did you go from troop to pro? Like how, or was this something that you expected to be pro right away? Like what was the process for you joining a, like a show like Dancing with Stars that's already been going for so long? So it was, um, gosh, to go back and remember that. It feels like so long ago. So it was. Dancing with <laughs> the Stars found me because of, uh, we put, came and performed on the show. Burn the Floor came and performed on the show. We were promoting that we were going to be on Broadway. And they like cheekily pulled a couple of us in for interviews into what used to be the confessional room. Remember that? Loved yes. the confessional. Love that room. And it was, I believe it was Sasha. It was Peter. It was myself. There was a couple Giselle, of us. Giselle, maybe. I think, pulled us in for these interviews. And then as we were um, workshopping the show uh, for Broadway, I was in Perth it, I was reached out to to join as a professional dancer, as a pro on the show. But because I was at that point under contract with dance with sorry, Burn the Floor and we were about to do Broadway, mm-hmm. I just and these people were my family. There was no way I could have done that. I had this Did Broadway they know you were dream. doing interviews? What, no, I don't think Burn the Floor knew that it was gonna happen. Yes. Right. It was again, it was a bit cheeky. <laughs> but um so they asked me, but I, I stayed loyal to um, my family of Burn the Floor and did Broadway. So the next time that I, but I said, I really want to do it. It was like, I was so scared I was going to miss out on this of opportunity. Course. So I kept saying, I absolutely want to be a part of it. And I just can't do it, my contract. And then it came to the end, oh, that was in 2009. Then it came to the end of uh, 2010. I was finishing up on the West End run with Burn the Floor and I was reached out to again about Dancing with the Stars uh, in 2011. But this time they had the troupe and it was like, we would love you to be a part of the troupe. It's this amazing way to introduce new dancers to um, our fans and to really get let them get to know because our fans fall in love with the dancers. And at the time I thought, or at least the way the conversation felt, it was like, you'll do one season as troop and then we'll make you a pro and then all these things. So that's what I sort of went in expecting. 
but it, it, I ended up having three seasons of Troop, which I wouldn't change for the world because I had such an amazing growing experience helping out with other pros, stepping into the room, really learning how to do the job, mm-hmm. um, learning how to choreograph a television, you know, everything that was just so different. I think if I had stepped in completely green the first time they'd offered me a contract, I wouldn't have been great at the job. Mm. I would have... I would have been so outside of my element and had to learn on the job. And I don't know if there would have been time for that. Right. So I'm really grateful that I yes. got to have those three seasons on Troop. And I got to choreograph and dance in pieces for amazing musical artists and be a part of really cool things mm-hmm. and learn how you guys were doing it mm-hmm. uh, and be like, after those three seasons, okay, yeah, I want to give this a, well, they offered it to me. And I was like, heck yes, I'm ready. Uh, and then I got Andy Dick. <laughs> so first partner. <laughs> speaking of that's, I mean, this is all like, this is taking me back. Andy Dick. Did you even know who Andy Dick was? So not by name. And this was, I remember the phone call. No, not a phone call. Actually, I think I was sitting in the office with them. Uh-huh. Andy Dick, do you know who that was? And I was like, no, but at this point I'm so excited. It didn't matter who you offered Did to you me. Google? I was like, I will do it. I Googled and then I knew him from that one scene in the movie Old School with the, is it a cucumber or I a carrot no idea. doing the blowjob? I was like, of course I know <laughs> this, this is person. This a family show. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, um, but I didn't know about his deep history with abu- um, abuse. drug abuse. Uh, and I think he also, which I didn't even know at the time, had some uh, sexual harassment cases against yes, with, him. with underage girls. With, which I had no idea about at the time. I didn't even know during but that season. But even if you did know. What can you do about it? What are you going to do? Yes. Right? It's like, absolutely true. When you're under contract, yeah. it's all good and well for me to say now, which I have said and was in the media, like if I had walked into the room with this person, I would, I, as a mother, I couldn't, I'd walk out. You still feel like that to this day? Even about, if you're under contract about if, Adrian no, Peterson. If you're under, I can say that sitting here right, not under contract. Right, because you're not under contract. You know, and I now being a mother ha- and I haven't been on the show since being a mother, have a very visceral reaction to anything to do with kids. It's absolutely. an emotional response. When you're under contract, you have absolutely no choice. You will be no. in breach of contract. You could be sued. Correct. They're, they're, no one has that choice unless you are truly unsafe. Right. And then you have to go through the proper channels and speak to people about that. So no, it was not to sidetrack our conversation. No, that no, wasn't to where, say that anyone else yeah. should have done that. That was my emotional response to right. something I'd found out that of day. Of course. But contracts are contracts. Girl. Right. We both know that. And so like I, because, you know, of everything too, I just wanted to see, because this is the first time I'm kind of sitting out and I'm like observing what's happening, right? Like yeah. everyone has their own opinions. Yes. And they have the right to their own opinions. Of course. So I am now reading how people are worried about Brit and her safety. Like it's all over, right? Yeah. What advice do you have for Brit knowing that you've been through controversial as well um, Mm -hmm. times on the show Mm -hmm. where it wasn't so fun? I'm sure you received a lot of hate and um, maybe threats even, you know? Yeah. So with Brit, I would say she's still kind of new-ish, right? But- this can't be easy for her either. It cannot be easy for her. And I think, oh my gosh, I cannot imagine the pressure and the stress that she would go through with mm-hmm. receiving some of the feedback from fans that think that she has a choice. Yeah. Um, Let's and make it clear though. Like tell our listeners what it's, we don't have a you choice. You don't have a choice. Yeah. And I, I'm deeply sorry if I, if my comments made people believe that she did have a choice because you don't. When you're under contract, it's like any job, you're under right, contract. Right. But my advice, if if I was to give any to a person that could be in that situation like Brit, is to film everything, to constantly have your phone running, to film everything because that is the only proof that you have if you do find yourself in a situation that makes you uncomfortable. And I'm not saying she is in one. I'm not, I don't know what their dynamic is like. I don't know what he is like as a person. I've never met him, but you're only saving grace in a situation like this is though, even though there are cameras in the room, they're not always rolling to protect yourself, to have your phone rolling, to have something recording the moment. So if you do have something arise that makes you uncomfortable, you can take it to your superiors. You can take it to the producers and executives and say, this is what's going on. I'm uncomfortable and mm-hmm. I need help in handling mm-hmm. this. Doesn't mean you're saying eliminate me off the show. It means let's find a better way to work with this situation that we're all in. Right. Um, and like you would hope and and they do. I mean, they'll protect you. Of course they will. The executives you know, will protect they you. Want yes. anyone want to be unsafe or in Mm -hmm. an uncomfortable situation, Mm -hmm. but they do need 
um, proof, right, mm-hmm. to take uh, measures and steps to do, move forward. To bring with it to something. standards and practices right. and all of that. Absolutely. With dancing, I guess what people don't understand is not just a jazz hands, put on a freaking V-neck and shake the butt and don't stress. Like, why are you stressing? Like, it's stressful. It's stressful. The show is stressful. Super stressful. Like, in order for us to make it not look stressful, we have to stress out. Because, like, yeah. in order for us to put a smile on our face with the glitter on, mm-hmm. like, we have to know what we're doing. Oh in God, and yeah. out, backwards and forwards, both versions of it. Like, yep. and we're guiding mm-hmm. our partners, but then imagine their vulnerability. Of course. Like, there's no... It, how stressful is it to watch someone stress on television? So stressful. It's so, so stressful. So stressful. So stressful. <laughs> like you literally feel it through the screen when you say someone freak out. I'm embarrassed. I have to change out. the channel. Like I couldn't yeah. watch America's Funniest Home Videos because I'm stressed. So stressed. <laughs> yeah. I'm sweating. I have a physical reaction to people's literally. stress when I watch it on television. Like some people laugh like when someone falls and I'm like, uh, I f- I'm crying. Like uh, I feel so bad. So uncomfortable. I'm so uncomfortable <laughs> watching this. Yeah, totally. So, okay. So when you said on your podcast, which I love, Everyone listened to Oldish. I've listened to every episode, as you know. I love how candid you are mm, because it's you. important. Because uh, by the way, we have the right to be, right? Like we this do. is our own yeah. experiences, our own feelings and our own just experience in life and how an amazing show like Dancing with the Stars shaped us because it was our life. It consumed oh, our my lives. Oh God, yes. And that was consumed a choice. And shaped. Right. Yes. And a beautiful choice. Wouldn't change it wouldn't want it to be any different but it is a massive Consuming. chunk of our life 17 years for you baby right and very formative years of your life too and i feel like every partner though it may have not all been like bells and whistles and flowers and peaches there was a learning lesson of life for me to learn at that time absolutely whether it brought me more strength or confidence or whether i just didn't like the that version of me right yeah totally now, when you ex- talked about on your podcast that there was a time when after Bobby, you you weren't asked back, uh-huh. right? And then you came back and then there was, um, would you like to just say it? Because I don't feel comfortable quoting you when you're sitting here next to me. Uh, I, I had a situation with a partner where um, it got to the point where we couldn't be a- alone in a right. room without people watching and unmonitored because this was also at a time when um it was COVID and we didn't have everyone watching all the cameras all the time it was we were scaled back on our crew so some rehearsals weren't watched and weren't recorded producers were in a booth because of COVID yes there was like robotic was in the room with us yeah they mm -hmm. were watching cameras with like little controllers to make them follow us around the room and they would switch in and out of rooms right so they could try and catch pieces of everyone not like it used to be when we'd have a producer in there the whole time. That's different. not like now because we have like, a different. We have Conrad back, yes, our showrunner, exactly, yeah. and he's amazing. Yeah, um, but yeah, that was a difficult situation for me. But I went through the proper channels, and I did. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to record everything, but mm-hmm. I was able to record some things. And I did go to the proper people, and there was reports made, and I was um, taken care of. You know, and I'd. I'd learned my lesson because I have in the past had two partners um, that made me feel very, very uncomfortable. Uh, And it was at a time I was much younger and I would laugh it off and I would suck it up and I would make it okay. And I even told, I told one person at the time, and this is, this is going back years and years. Mm -hmm, This is mm -hmm. pre me too. And it was a partner of mine that was making me feel very uncomfortable and was hitting on me and getting nothing back from me. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then he got a little pissed about that. And um, my uh, producer or coordinator at the time was like, oh, just let him think he can have it. You know what men are like. It was like, oh, okay. And that was sort of like you go, "Mm okay, so this uh, I'm I'm on an island of one here. Like I feel like I'm on my own doing this. But what I didn't go to the people that I was supposed to go to. I told one person, you know what I mean? Um, and I learned and this my was lesson. years ago. Years, 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 yeah, years, yeah. years. Before years. me is, too. Let me reiterate. Before, yeah. yeah, before yeah. guys. There's like I, I've grown and learned my lesson. And I am, I'm not alone in this experience. No. When you get on a show like Dancing with the Stars, and it's men and women dancing together, and you have close contact, and you're creating all these stories and intentions, why is Ken get crossed? You know what I mean? It's yeah. I am I again not alone. But I learned over the years how to squash that and how to set up boundaries right. and how to make sure that wasn't going to happen again. And I understood, especially 
after, you know, during and after Me Too of these examples of women coming forward and saying from the big to the little things. And I was like, holy shit, that happened to me. I didn't even realize that I could speak up about that. And so I learned. And so when I had a situation which was not sexual in any nature, why it was uncomfortable in that room. I would like it, to say that But at too. the end of the day, though, it, no need to explain. It, it, right, right, no like need to justify. You were uncomfortable, period. That's a complete <clears throat> sentence. Exactly. It is a complete sentence. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, but I did the right thing and I went to the right people and mm-hmm. I spoke mm-hmm. up and I was taken care of and I was able to do my job, you know. And, and not I'm, live in shame. And not live in shame with it. Or and I was fear. really proud of that. Yeah. Yes. Or fear. And that this is why I just wanted to make this time for this because like it's every time someone does speak up, and by the way, it is so important because no matter what anyone says, everyone is in fear of losing their jobs. Absolutely, and, they are. And in, in general, I don't. And I'm not saying this by with about Dancing with the Stars. I'm just saying in the workplace, in the work as a place woman, in the world. Yes. I am so sorry. People are like, oh, get over it. Like, no, 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 because it's it, it's a real actual problem. Yes. That when you speak up. You're the problem. You're the problem. Whether Absolutely. that's because you feel uncomfortable or you have an opinion or you're just putting in your two cents because you know why? Because I'm a human being and yeah. I have just freedom of speech, yeah. right? Like I can say what I want to say mm-hmm. with all due respect. Like any time somebody decides to, I guess, not open up and not um, vocalize how uncomfortable they might feel, it's like that's what we're trying to at least, we're trying to move away from that. We're t- Boom. <laughs> Trying to move away from that and not live in fear or be silenced. Because Absolutely. that's the thing yes. that is so, um, it's heartbreaking because we're, we're all in fear of losing jobs. We are. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it's, it's a horrible feeling to have. Um, but I think it's for us, it's, it's a, for women. Yeah. Very specifically, it's a muscle that we have to work out and practice that advocating for ourselves, that speaking up and saying this makes me uncomfortable from the small things to the big things. Start with the small things. Get practice that muscle of, yeah. again, advocating for yourself. We have to teach and people how yourself. to treat us. Yes. You yeah. know, boundaries, boundaries, teach people how to treat you. And, and, you know, if you step into a space, a workspace and you 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 are able to find that um, that way of communicating your boundaries, mm-hmm. then you can move forward like that. I think when you go in and you go in scared already and then you got to backtrack and change it, it, it feels really, really hard to do yeah. that. But, it's, but you have to speak up for yourself. You, you have, have to, to like respect yourself before yeah. you set boundaries because yeah. there's no such thing, yeah. right? Like what are you setting if you hate yourself? Right, yeah. How are you feeling today with, you know, not being a part of Dancing with the Stars mm-hmm. and and getting a call, obviously saying, you know, you're not going to be a part this season, but yet there's so much, like so many feelings must be going through your body, you know, because whether or not it was your decision or their decision is irrelevant. Totally. Like, there was an experience there. Yeah. That really put a stamp on all of us. Yeah, it did. Like, cause I, I can say from, from experience, I, even though it was my choice, I am grieving hardcore. Yeah. It's not hard. Being there. It I is get hard. that. Listen, two things can be true. This is what I keep saying. I can be, um, about that experience of not being called back really like sad or heartbroken or hurt all these feelings that came up. Like, why don't they want me? I can feel all those things. And I can at the same time still have love for the show and be so excited for everyone on it. But right now, like I've, I've had, not had, I think I will go through it for, for more time, but I'm within that healing journey of not being there. I'm so good with it. I mm. love where I am in my life. I am deep in motherhood and I love that. I have other opportunities engaged. that are coming up. I am engaged. I cannot, Sharda. To button up that last one, I am in a place of gratitude, love, and we, and I am so excited for wherever life takes me, whether that is back to the show or not. Now with this ring... <laughs> Um, let me just say that this was the most beautiful experience. Bri proposed to me and we're going to tell the story on Oldish. Yes. Um, but to give you a little bit, bit like we had to, I wanted to change the band um, because I wanted to have like the diamonds on the band because you know girl. me, extra must have all the sparkle. So we went into uh, Cartier because she is a Cartier ring. 
Uh huh. And uh, I was had this like dream experience, sitting in a room, being showered with gifts and cakes and champagne. Like Pretty and, Woman. Like Pretty Woman. They bring out all these rings, and it was like that. Well, and with Bri, he's like, well, baby, do you want to just you know you've never tried on engagement rings before? Do you want to see what some of the other ones look like and do make sure no this idea? is exactly what you love? No, he'd already proposed to me. And then I was like, I had this loving conversation of like, hey, so you know how extra I am and I love sparkle. I mean, we're ballroom dancers. I would just want to get, take yeah, that out. like dip me in glue and roll me yeah. around in Look diamonds. Look your shoes. She's got shoes full of sparkles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is me. This is my life. Um, yeah. And so uh, he totally was like, baby, I want you to have your absolute dream. So we went back into Cartier and they sat me there and brought out all of these rings. And I was just like, what is life? This this does not right. feel real right. for me at all. Sitting on trying on different shapes and different cuts and different bands. And it was like sitting there with the love of my life next to me. Doing the cha-cha-cha. Yeah. Right? Five, like- six, seven, eight, bitch. Let's go. Like, no, thank you. I am really deeply in love with my life life and yes. I have no regrets and no nothing that I'm even wanting right now other than to be in this space continuing what I'm doing and growing with the people that I love um I wouldn't miss out on a single moment that I'm experiencing for the world and I'm really excited to now have this open space mm-hmm. that I can allow other opportunities to come in because I think I've been so obsessed with being on Dancing with the Stars for 13 years of my life. It's been my identity. It's been everything, clawing my way back to it when I wasn't on it, all these things. But I truly am in a space of, oh my God, I actually feel free of the need this deep need to be on the show. I, w- I would love to go back and dance my ass off again, mm. but I'm also really excited now about what is to come. And, um, and so much, Sharna though, but like if you really take a step back and observe your life, yeah, so much has come. So much. Because Babe. I believe in direct reaction to mm-hmm. you not being on the show. Yeah, probably that, you know, the universe, you know, one door op- closes, another door opens or again, seeing this space that I'm allowing uh, now new things to come and fill it. And I actually shared this with you last night, but when I was meditating and manifesting before this current season of Dancing with the Stars and sending out to the universe the things that I want to call in, every time I got to saying the words Dancing with the Stars, the next season of it, my it stopped. And I continued to say to the universe, I am I am so ready and excited for the best opportunity for me for mm. this next thing. And whatever that may be, I will welcome. And in my mind, I'm still thinking that could be Dancing with the Stars, but I was leaving it open. But there is a very specific reason that I didn't feel called to say specifically that show for it's this so moment true. in time. It just was not supposed to happen. Yeah. And again, that's where I don't believe it was personal. It The universe just guided both the people on that show that make decisions and me to go a different direction for maybe a moment right. in time, maybe forever. Who knows? But you were single for so like you were single for as long as what, five years? Oh six yeah. Years? From 30 to when I met right. Bryce. So what, like 30, 35. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, after now being divorced, it's like, yes, I love being alone. And yes, I'm learning to love myself and all of this, but there is a beautiful like feeling mm-hmm. when you have, I'm sure, when you go home to a family, oh right? God, Your own yes. family that you've made together. Yeah. So with all of this being said, like I believe until your home and your foundation is is strong as far as a unit and love goes, that will be a direct reflection off of your next career, yeah. right? Because if that's an empty nest, what, what are you going to give out? Right, you right, know, totally. This emptiness, yeah. right? So- I don't know. I think you're on the right path, Thank honestly, you, and I'm so happy for you. Let's play rapid fire. <gasps> okay. Dun, dun, dun. I need a sound effect. Rapid fire, Easton. not rabid fire. What is rapid. it? Rapid. Yeah, rap- rapid. Rapid. You said rapid. I said rapid fire. <laughs> Get your freaking hose out. We're going to have, this is going to be a doozy. Let's do it. We're going to do this. And we're going to talk about only your dance partners. Okay. You can't name one twice. Okay. Ready. Most fun. James Hinchcliffe. Oh, you're not going to want to waste that, but okay, you did. Oh, no. Who got on your last nerve? You mean I can't say him? More Correct, bit- because I did this with Max and he just said the same freaking person four times in a oh, row. Okay. So he was fired. Okay, wait, the most fun? You, yeah, um, no, no, you, you already answered okay. it. Oh, fuck. All right. Who got on your last nerve? Who Shut got up. on my last nerve? 
No comment. <laughs> That's a really, he was cute, wasn't he? That partner of yours? No comment. Impacted your life. Impacted my life. Noah Galloway. Who did you have the best chemistry with other than Brian? Other than Brian? Brian get out of here. And I can't say anyone twice? Yes. Oh, I know. That's bullshit. Do you need, a, do you need to like Google yourself this so we can- This can't be right here. Who were all my partners? No, I, I mean, I have to um, Google myself for my um, birthday sometimes. I forgot. <laughs> You know, the other day I was like, am I 38 or 39? Right. What am no, I? Same. This rapid fire Wait, is really rapid. Yeah, um, like, hurry. Um, um, who would I have the most chemistry with? Just say, just come on. It's all PG. It's all good old tongue and cheek. Uh, you know what? Josh Norman and I got along really oh, well. Cute. We had a really good time. Biggest gentleman. Biggest. Biggest gentleman. Not like the biggest, but like the, you know. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Easton. Are you <laughs> Yes. I mean, that's a lot of partners. Uh, uh, the gentleman. Oh, Charlie White. He was such oh, yes. a respectful, I wonderful like Charlie. partner. Easiest to get along with. Now you're screwed. Okay, then Nick Carter. Okay, fine. Nick Carter and fine, I got fine, along fine. Really Most well. trustworthy. God damn it. I don't have enough partners for this. Well, I do, but like not ones that I can answer. I mean, um, it's pretty obvious with this one. Most trustworthy? Well, the person who put the ring on your finger. Oh, I would okay. Assume. So I can say Brian. Yeah, because well, I didn't say don't say Brian. Oh, you okay. Know what I'm okay, yeah, okay. Okay, Brian. <laughs> most flirty. Ah. Uh, Brian would say he's the most flirty, but that was for another show. Yeah, he did. I yeah. heard that. Bless him. <laughs> uh, most flirty. You have a lot more. You better hurry, girl. This is rapid fire, rapid, rapid fire. I'm dyslexic. Okay. What can I say? Um, and. Oh no! That no one was really flirty like that. Come huh? on, huh? Yes, there. Oh, yeah, come on! I know they were, but like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Antonio Brown. Co correct. Okay, that wasn't that hard, was it? Let's go. Who did you argue with the most? Shit. Yep. Well, from season twenty nine. Okay, most intimidating. Probably, I know I can't say once twice, but Nick Carter. Like I had a full fan girl. Really? Moment. Yeah, full like fan Like I girl. do with your fiance. Yeah, you did? No, yeah. no you don't understand. I only I watched one hour of TV a week and, and it was his <laughs> show. Nick Carter, for sure. <laughs> Sweatiest. Oh, wait, there was someone that was, that he would go. Go ahead, wait, you can I change it. Bobby. I this think Bobby Bones. I think he would go through like. Two sweaty? Or three. Yeah, because he would work oh. really hard and also stress really hard. Who would you like to apologize to if you could go back in time? Um, who would I like to apologize to? Probably not because I was a dick, but <laughs> I actually think because Yourself. with uh, because I was so new to it. Yes, myself. <laughs> so new to it. I think uh, Charlie White had he have had the more experienced version of me that understood the show and understood the assignment better. Um, I could have taken him all the way to the final. He deserves Wait, to be you, in that you would final. apologize to him because of his of the result? Because he, because I could sure have not. I really think You're I could have done better yourself for him. For the, no, 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 <laughs> no. I mean, we're gonna pretend we didn't hear this guy with all the self work you've been doing. No, let's rephrase this. What do you mean? How no This is I, not your fault. Not my fault at all. We did amazing work, but at the time I I was still very much about this is a dance. So competition. you were like kind of like testy is what no, you're saying I wasn't mean to him I just mean I didn't understand the assignment of like we have to create great packages and do all these things I was just about creating great dance why okay. do you look at me because like that no he sure totally not. deserved be to be nice to, to yourself final. laziest that's the last one girl rapid fire Keyshawn Johnson okay yay <laughs> that wasn't really rapid I'm sweating for you <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing but when you've had 75 partners but yeah, I don't, what have I had? 12? 14. 14. I counted last night, cross-eyed, but um, <laughs> literally cross-eyed. Thank you. I am happy for you. Thank you, babe. And I expect to be there at your wedding. Okay. Thanks. You shall be at my <laughs> wedding. You absolutely must I don't need to be, be at my it, wedding. But I need to be there. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Everyone, please follow us at Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans or else anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's a threat. Goodbye.